Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Esselatu vesselamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. We'll be reading from 33rd word, uh, 31st window. So, uh, this is going to be a kind of conversational reading. So, maybe we can go paragraph by paragraph. And uh, we selected a topic which is not very much, very hard, very difficult, which is not very easy also, but to deepen our own understanding on uh, one of the two, three verses from Holy Quran. Then uh, this window is called the window of man or the window of human. Uh, What we do in, in dersanes most of the time is uh, we have weekly dars, sometimes uh, weekly gathering. So in that gatherings, we one brother reads, then if there is some questions, they raise the questions, then we, we discuss about that topic. So we selected this topic today, so we can discuss it together. Then if there is some something that you want to make clarify or if you want to ma uh, make clarification or if you want to add your own understanding we, we will be glad to hear then one last point is that if you are the one who is going to translate this part into your local language would there be any difficulties in translating this part some words or uh, all of us speaking English and we know English, so if if there is another way of saying this word which you think that it would be better without knowing the original part of it even, would there be, if would there be something, some words or some sentences that you think that it is more appropriate for this part, please? Can we have Yes, actually we try to get a copy of it, pero... Uh, then will be more yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right, but we... We, we tried it, but we couldn't find the photocopy machine here. Maybe, <coughs> maybe tomorrow we can arrange. Yeah, from tomorrow one. onwards. Then it, <coughs> it would be better to... F f um, yes, that's right, that's right. Maybe it would be uh, more on like a workshop on yeah. one topic. I do not know, if, is, there, is there any one of you who translated 33 windows? Mm. Okay, which means uh, this is one of the things that we have not yet translated into our local language. So let's see, this is one of the uh, very important parts. There are some parts in Risale Nur collection related with Tawheed, which is very much necessary in understanding of entire collection, like Ayatul Kubra. Th those are like cornerstones of Risale Nur collection, like uh, the Supreme Sign, the Tenth Word, and one of them is also 33 windows. Um, before I start the 33 windows, I would like to start with the end part with, with uh, small notes by Ustad Bedi Zaman. Inshallah, God willing, the 33rd letter of 33 windows will bring to belief those without belief, strengthen the belief of those whose belief is weak, Make certain the belief of those whose belief is strong but imitative. Give greater breath to the belief of those whose belief is certain. Lead to progress in knowledge of God, the basis and means of all true perfection. For those whose belief has breath and open up more brilliant vistas for them. You cannot say, therefore, that one window is enough for me. Because if your reason is satisfied, your heart wants its share as well. And so, will your spirit want its, share, want its share? Your imagination will also want its share of the light. The other windows are also necessary. Therefore, for each contains different benefits. It's so interesting here. Uh, the uh, non-material uh, faculties of people. Let's say they have, you know, arm, you know, eyes, uh, I don't know, mouth, but, uh, legs. But here mentioned about, let's say, the heart and then the 
imagination. Uh, and the imagination also has what uh, it needs, uh, kind of, you know, just like a like physical organ, that it needs, you know, uh, to be fed. Uh, and uh, it gets uh, pleasure out of it. And it grows out of that uh, feeling. Mm, when we re when we go to some universities, some colleges, if we are going to introduce them Risale Nur, they always ask us. Uh, you know, it's very commonly used by any organizations nowadays, right? Mission, vision, objectives. They always okay because even if we are kind of informal, uh, uh, not not organizations, in, in let's say informal movement. We don't have like formalities like presidents, chairmen, this and that. Uh, but sometimes the the perception of people always goes leads to that that type, and they always ask us. So, who are you? What's your purpose? What's your mission, vision, objectives, purpose? We are always coming across with this kind of questions, and sometimes we answer with this: the work of Risaleinur is to bring those. Uh, people without belief to belief and those who has belief but their belief is weak to strengthen their belief those who has a strong belief to make those believers belief stronger and to bring it from imitative to a certainty of belief and inshallah at the end those who has the certainty of belief through risale in our collection Pro bring them into the progress <coughs> of knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to, to let them to get more info or more knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'rifatullah and sometimes also uh, when we are discussing this, these issues we always start with the purpose of life why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created men when we look at to this universe with the eye of wisdom, we cannot see anything without purpose, without aim. Everything from microscopic things up to solar system, everything has purpose. Uh, sometimes uh, Brother Abdul Halim says, my uh, socks has a purpose, but the legs without being without purpose. Or the eyeglass has a purpose, but the eyes does not have purpose. So it's impossible, yes. So what is the purpose of men? So it's systematically, it's in a very easy way, we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in the universe with purpose and the universe purpose is life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in the universe in order to produce <coughs> life. Then after this, the life has also a ultimate purpose. The, the purpose of life is, uh, <coughs> most of the time we say three things, right? Belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sometimes we say makhafatullah and muhabbatullah love and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these four things that is the purposes that man has been created then we go back so what is belief and what is knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how do we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then how do we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how are we going to have a piety or the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one point and in this paragraph there is another point. You cannot say one window is enough for me and then we generalize this one for entire collection. The 33 windows is not enough for us. The Ayatul Kubra is not. So there is really a collective uh, effort has to be done in order to understand the totality of uh, Risaleinu. Uh, maybe if you have something to share about this part, if not we will start with the 31st window. Murat Abi, maybe? This particular part, Abi, mm -hmm. 33 windows maybe, will bring. Maybe you can tell something about it. why the name is the windows? Why 
Uh, but what is the conce concept of the window? Yeah. What is the meaning of the window? Me, I got something. Maybe let's uh, start with me, and I think the other another stand at the good things. Uh, I imagine that this is the in in this uh, book where the Zaman explains the proof of existence of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. How can we get this proof? Like <coughs> we if we can imagine ourselves in house inside the walls, you know, if if the uh, every every part of us surrounded by the walls, walls we cannot see any other uh, outer of the houses. Uh, we cannot see. We need window. We, if we if we have any window, we can see the outer part of the houses. Mm -hmm. Inside of this universe, I think we need the windows to see the the uh, existence of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. To see the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we need the windows. These explanations, I think, these three explanations also helps us to understand the meaning of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huh? and the, uh, therefore maybe the, this name also put inside that the, as the windows, maybe. It can also be like, uh, huh? uh, the window also signifies, uh, sorry, entry is a different word. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Does it show uh, the importance of observation? So, when you zaman in the Sahara uh, observing the universe and finding the evidences, testimonies of uh, the universe to the unity of Allah, the oneness of Allah. So, uh, thirty-three windows. So, showing us uh, the importance of observation so we are observing uh, the universe and we are finding out the truth of Quran in the from these windows let me add something maybe more also when we look to the window uh, the commonly our aim is this to see behind the window not the glasses you know behind the window then the, it means that the, the beings in this universe is like the window when we are looking to the dam, our aim should not be the, to see the flower only. We should try to see behind the flower, like the behind the windows, you know. I think in, in this verse, Bediu Zaman also explains that the, how can we see behind the uh, particle beings in this universe? How can we make them as a window, as a transparent things to show behind them like that? Maybe also we can um, uh, try to understand like this point of view, maybe as the window. Why is it 33, not just one window? Okay, they also maybe uh, Raza Abi already read some parts. And each window helpful or fruitful for the different, different uh, perspectives or the, uh, uh, what, let's say, eh? the different parts of huh? essence. essence, different essence of the human beings. We have a lot of things different. And our heart is different from the, our mind. For example, the one uh, explanation is enough for our mind, as explained here, but the heart is looking for the another type of explanation. Or the, uh, or the dream, like the imagination, waiting wait to do another uh, different type of explanation also. And the also, you know, the each person, each human being also different from the others. Sometimes one proof is enough for me, but not enough for my brother. The second proof also enough for himself. Or maybe because of the, these points, we need a lot of windows. But the Zaman also, uh, I think the rights at the beginning of the, this part, the, I select this number, 33, because of the, this blessed number is the, the tesbiha, tesbiha to salat, tesbiha to pray, and the, therefore the 33 uh, selected. Maybe because the, there are more, much more than the 33 windows exist in this universe. But the, this is the, maybe the enough for the understand how can we change the particles or beings to the window. 
Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> he came at something. Yani, there is also a, in the in the in the Aytul Kubra. Or the supreme sign. There is a condition by Ustad. He says not everybody can understand this actually treatise. But the Rizal you know, is like it's a garden when you come inside and then although you cannot understand everything written here, but at least you can get your share according to the level of your comprehension and the degree of your understanding. So he said, everybody will not go home empty-handed, empty and he can get his share. The windows, in some sense, it could be like that. There are some windows you cannot understand, really. Because Ustad is not one person when he, ri when he writes. He writes from many personalities. When he writes message for the sick, he writes like a Ustad. But when he writes the Tabiat Risalis, eh, or the nature, 17th flash, He's like a scientist. He explains biology and explains everything from a scientific point of view. Now, if you stay, yani, that's why in the translation it's very important that, you know, there is one preacher in Izmir. I heard this story that every time he has a topic to talk about during the khutbah or the wasiat, he become like that person that he's talking about. Yani, if he talks about Rasulullah, he is like, in that day, he transformed himself as if he is in front of Rasulullah. When he speaks about the Rasulullah, he's a very famous preacher from Izmir. Yani, in this sense, Yani Ustad Ben Yuzaman speaks from many personalities. When he writes, he's not writing as just one person, but he speaks one day he speaks like a village teacher. He advises people simple things, unity and brotherhood. But the next article, the next treatise, he speaks like a hoja. He speaks like a university professor. He's lecturing about the dome, he's lecturing about the sciences. So translator maybe a translator, I have to say this one. A translator maybe have also to transform himself. Or if he's unable to transform himself, he could limit into the topics that he can understand only. In his background, maybe he's a teacher. And this is what we have understood from the 33 windows. Maybe not all windows we can understand, but there are 33 windows we can choose from. So from the windows we can choose from, maybe one, two, three windows we could understand. Maybe it can help us also. The same way that someone goes into a bache, into a garden, even though he cannot reach all the fruits, but he can really have his share and he can understand some some of the things that is explained in the in the Risale. Maybe that is also one explanation why there are 33 windows. So anyone who wish to translate this one, maybe he could also uh, get the inputs. Three windows. Uh, Actually, in the 23rd word, in the 23rd word, you start talking about the example of palace. He says that, let's think, let's suppose that there is a palace, and for the pa I, I am not sure now whether it is in 23rd word, it's, it's uh, but uh, he gives the example, there is a palace, and this palace have 1,000 even doors, but you can you can conquer, you can enter this palace uh, at this from one door. So if the, some doors, even if they are locked, but it doesn't mean that the all rest of the doors are locked. So it's possible for you to explore, to find uh, the way for the reality or to conquer that palace. So this universe is also, uh, for the na in respect of the names of God, in, the, in, in respect of the attributes of Allah or the other kind of mysteries for this universe, actually, they resemble the windows, they resemble the palace, they resemble, and they resemble the palace and they have, there are many ways like the windows, like the doors to explore or to attain.
that's why I think he uses such a kind of metaphors. Can you do that again, the second parallel? <coughs> it's not that long, so I will read the all. Inshallah, this 33rd yeah. letter of 33 windows will bring to the wind those without belief, strengthen the belief of those whose belief is weak, make certain the belief of those whose belief is strong but imitative, give greater bread to the belief of those whose belief is certain, lead to progress in knowledge of Allah, subhanallah wa ta'ala, the basis and means of all true perfection. For those, I think, uh, yes, uh, Muratabi means this part. For those whose belief has breath and open up more brilliant vistas for them, you cannot say, therefore, that one window is enough for me. Because if your reason is satisfied, if your reason is satisfied, your heart wants its share as well. And so will your spirit wants it, want its share. Uh, today we were discussing about this informative, transformative issues. Actually, the purpose of education is really tra to, it's, it's really about transformation. It is uh, as um, have you heard about uh, values education? It's becoming a very popular in the world, in the world of education, in high school, in grade school, even in colleges. Right now, uh, we have been discussing about this values education. And the main, uh, the purpose of the, the main aim, the vital aim of education is actually not information, not just to give some people information about sun, about moon, about uh, biology, about physics. It's not about this one, right? It's about how we are going to implement this information in our life. And if there is no changes in the action of people, which means that education is very weak. So that's why we have a certain type of uh, analysis that yesterday the student was like this and today it's like that. Last uh, six months ago, we come up with a third volume of our uh, Risale Nur Institute publication mm -hmm. and the, public, the, the main topic was about transformation and the transformation. And then we let students uh, those students who embraced Islam or those Muslim students who come across with Risale Nur and we just want them to share with us the changes in their life before Risale Nur, after Risale Nur, before Islam, after Islam what changed in your life it's not that just we know Rasulullah or we know this as an information we know this 33 proofs of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I think the main idea or main things in, in Risale Inner Collection is this one. Not just only the information. That's why it's very important. Because maybe the rest of the books is about reason. And when our reason is satisfied, we seem to be uh, satisfied totally. But according to the uh, psychology, we have around 3,000 plus inner faculties. Uh, like... Uh, when we say reason, actually, it's not just reason, right? The reason has maybe hundreds of different inner faculties also. Uh, Ustad Bedi Zaman gives some of them in the ninth letter, right? So, when we say heart also, there is a s certain level mm -hmm. of satisfaction. It's not just only... that We cannot just say that, okay, I am satisfied right now. It's, it's really, it's, it's a certain type of process also. Uh, if your reason is satisfied, your heart wants its share as well, and so will your spirit want its share. Uh, another thing, what I understand from here is that sometimes uh, our reason does not get something, but our spirit gets it. But since our reason did not get too much, uh, we don't seem to be like, uh, we don't seem to be... Uh, it's very hard to it's it's very hard to determine the satisfaction of spirit actually, because the reason is quite understandable, but the the satisfaction of heart, the satisfaction of spirit is not that easy. That's why, uh, like for like for example, when we read the twenty third word or ayatul kubra, I have seen many of I I, I have experienced this one in my own life. Mm. Abi, this is very mm. interesting. I didn't read a lot about. Uh, five times daily prayer. But when I read Ayatul Kubra, 
uh, I was 15 years old. From that time until today, I could not give up my prayer. It's very mm -hmm. It was not about prayer actually, but it's something that it's about Allah subhanahu wa taala. It is not about uh, how to pray. It's not about how to take ablution. It's not about the necessity of the prayer, but it is ayatul kubra, and you feel that you have to do something Allah to Allah subhanahu wa taala. I do not know if I could explain no. it well or not, but maybe this can be. I think that's the most important also. It's not just on the cognitive level and affective, but it's more the like psychomotor. That is the thing that uh, that Bijusaman wants. And I think that we call that balance, not just for the two uh, domains. Yeah, I think, uh, mm, uh, let's say, human beings have, uh, like animals, you know, one physical stomach. And uh, by nature, every stomach needs food. Uh, so uh, if, let's say, we don't fee feed it, it will be, you know, pain. If you feed it uh, to the sufficient level, it is satisfied. The human, uh, what, the physical stomach. For animals, that's enough. Human beings have a lot of stomachs. Uh, let's say the mind is a stomach. Uh, let's say the sense of art is stomach. Sense of uh, beauty. Uh, a lot of, uh, let's say, compassion, love, etc. These are uh, stomach. If they say the stomach is somehow developed to a certain point, uh, or the more developed it is, the more food it, ha it needs. Uh, by, let's say, uh, exposing yourself uh, to, let's say, art, you simply feed your stomach of art. And if, let's say, you don't do it, if you do it, let's say, it is satisfied. That you, you go to, let's say, a gallery, you say, that was a feast. Uh, kind of, you know, my eyes ate a lot of art. And you feel uh, satisfied. But if you go there, there is nothing, you know, <coughs> you live in pain. They call this, you know, art, you know, nothing, you know, I am hungry. Uh, show me uh, something else. Uh, so it is, you know, uh, dissatisfied. And often, you know, the, uh, these are, you know, uh, 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 intermingled together. It is not like, you know, one for certain stomach, uh, but uh, often one food satisfies many things, uh, or many things satisfy, you know, again, can go to the different feelings, but non-spiritual things. Even music satisfies a lot of things. Let's say Quran. Uh, a lot of things. Uh, it feeds them, and as they are fed, they get stronger. Uh, otherwise, they get hungry, you may or may not feel the pain, and they may die. Yeah, it's important for also other philosophies, mm. like Maslow's theory. Mm -hmm. They're also based on this satisfaction, mm -hmm. like the like the other physical needs, mm. like this. But the importance of Quran and maybe importance of the Salim in this age comes from this. It's how does it make a um, model and give a satisfaction by the giving the real need of us. Mm -hmm. And the, when this satisfaction is realized and how much we be aware of it, we can benefit from this. And this is mm -hmm. the especially like that I said I, in my mind maybe it's wrong as Fafiru Ilal Allah. Directly it makes satisfaction by uh, make us understand the manifestation of Allah that's manifest in this universe. Mm -hmm. That's it's comprehend it's being comprehensive, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So instead of junk food, we feed real food, huh? yeah. nutritious. <laughs> nutritious food. Mm. That's why mm. uh, Ibrahim Hakk from Erzurum he said, "Jew is ismi azam." Mm -hmm. The hunger yeah. is a, one of the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa taala. But then the ulama was like, hunger is not the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How come it becomes the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because it's not really a ism azam actually. It is not even one of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But hunger is one of the places that can be manifested, the greatest names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it. If you don't feel your hunger, 
there is no one who is going to feed you. So, insh every moment, inshallah, we can feel that we are hungry of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we can uh, grasp the, the meanings uh, from this recital collection. But uh, the second paragraph, I suppose not to read, but I want to read it. It's very interesting. It says, in the treatise on the ascension of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it was primarily, uh, why I'm reading, because it is really related with translators. I suppose to jump to the uh, to the, the, the topic that we spo uh, we are going to read inshallah but this part seems to be very important for translators that's why I'm going to read it in the treatise on the ascension of the Prophet وسلم, Miraj it was primarily the believer who was addressed while the atheist was in the position of listener but in this treatise it is the denier who is addressed while it is the believer who is in the position of listener. This should be taken into consideration when looking at it. Uh, something came to my mind, maybe it's very important also. Uh, Ustad Bedi Zaman says, when we are going to listen, when we are going to study, when we are going to know something, four questions has to be asked. Men qala, wali men qala, Maqama, Maqsat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, huh? The Rotarian way. The who said it? Who said it? Who, who said it? The second one is? <coughs> to whom? The third is? What is the purpose? And fourth is? In what position? This, this is very important. Maybe it, it, it has to be taken into consideration also. Like... Uh, to understand really what Bedi Zaman, because we need to know the addressee and to whom we are going to give this one and uh, even while translating it that we need to keep in mind that this one is actually for those people the, the, the primary addressee here is the atheist the primary addressee here is the believers something I don't know, maybe yeah, I... Yeah, you are all right. No, yeah. See, unless and until we don't have an idea about the audience. That's right. Even mm -hmm. Our attempt will be like, <laughs> we'll, not, we'll not reach anywhere. That's right. So I think, you know, that's why even someone writes <coughs> uh, teach you. Uh, before actually we start translating uh, you know, you know, writings, I think it's important to uh, find out, you know, what are the texts which are actually needed in a particular region. Do we need to translate everything uh, in, in one go? Or do we need to prioritize the text? There are traditions in that regard. I think the tradition is you start with the uh, simplest. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, what is the logic of it? Well, there is some logic, mm -hmm. but there may be, you know, uh, a better ways. Mm. Um, what are and the texts? It text? depends on also to the country, maybe. Yes. And it, for example, for the European countries, mm -hmm. if the unbelievers is the majority, the some parts like the nature causal effect mm. or the supreme sign can we get the priority from yeah, yeah. than the others. Yeah. But if you are inside the Islamic world, Islamic country, maybe like the uh, sensitivity and brotherhood, twenty fifth mm. world, twenty fifth mm. world, like this type of part, maybe it should be first from the others. Yani the, the the brother Shamsuddin, yeah, 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 mentioned about this point. You know, yeah. the what is the priority of the Risalat al-Ishtihad? Ishtihad at that place, like the also the like this type of things we heard before. But the, if the uh, the group or the people who translate it can dis can uh, can discuss among them which one is the f it should be first one. It is better. It should change according to countries, according to
people, believer or unbeliever or Muslim or like the others. It can be changed, I think. Okay, now, uh, this. maybe uh, very important also. Yeah, Ustad Yani sufficiently addressed the people who are reading, whether atheist or not, uh, believer or not. I believe that for for the for the Rizalin or to retain its pristine form, we should not interfere with the wordings, which is not there, which is not implied. It should be Yani. There is a textual connection between the translator and the author. It should be a faithful reproduction of the original. Otherwise, we will be just yani, murdering his work. At the same time, before translating, we should create a, yani, a, some a different connection with the Ustad. Because, as I said earlier, Ustad is not a one person when he writes something. He is a different person at the same, at different writings. He could be one teacher at the same time when he wrote Message for the Sick. When he, when he wrote uh, Ijtihad about uh, Mujtahid in 27th word, he could be a uh, ulama. But when he wrote Tabiat uh, Risalisi or Nature, he is becoming scientist. Now, if someone who is translating is stationary and does not change according to the transformation that Ustad is, is uh, making, he could be trapped in a one personality that he is only purely textual. Yeah, they, he has only a textual connection with the author. Now, someone who is attempting to translate the Risale, or should, yeah, they, this is a, just a suggestion maybe, we can create a committee that can provide a advice for those who are attempting to translate something from the Risale. Or. Example, 17 plus is about nature. You cannot translate it if your background is purely in the madrasa, or purely a teacher, if you have no background about sciences, it's very hard to translate because there are terms used by Ustad there. Yani, you have to consult a biologist, you have to consult a physicist, maybe there is a advisory council that can provide you advice that, yeah, when you translate this one, this is what Ustad implied in this statement. Since you are English-speaking people, when he says the dome, the connection with the outside world, he's, he's talking about sustenance, he's talking about these things. So in the same way, if you cannot really, yani, if you don't have the capacity really to render it as what Ustad wanted to render this writing, might as well ask an advisory council who can give us an advice before, prior to translation, that this is what Ustad implied in this writing. Sometimes the footnotes are not enough, really. And it's also good if because sometimes footnotes becomes part of the text later on. So it, footnotes are, are, are limited. But at the same time, before translating, we should consult some people. That's why I've, I've been advocating this in the Philippines, that there are so many abbeys in Turkey that are providing dars in their sane. And then it's important that their, their videos on YouTube, for example, should be translated, should have uh, English subtitles. It's very important. So that when we read the text and he is making that there's about the text, we will have an initial idea of what he's talking about. Because otherwise, if we have no idea, we'll best, we will just be making our own interpretation of his, of his writings, of his there's. So it's very important, uh, if we can do that, inshallah, it's, it is a, of great help. We have very limited sources yeah. of... Yes. Very yeah, we have so many abbeys that can make theirs, which are, you know, so very... Uh, yeah, yeah. They are making Turkish theirs, but we cannot understand. How can we understand? So we just, we need English subtitles, really. This Hoja Effendi Jamaat, they're making this one. That's why people, even us who do not understand, we become something. Uh, this connection with Mashallah is very good. He's talking so many things that it is very new to us. Isn't it also a different way of uh, talking about science? Uh, yes, written about science and 
But doesn't use you know the terminologies which are uh, used in the, in, the, in the scientific world. It actually in in a way popularizes uh, you know this quote unquote scientific knowledge, which are otherwise uh, considered as exclusive knowledge. So I think you know you, you can also look at uh, uh, Badiou Zaman's writings on science as a different uh, uh, as a way of talking about science in a uh, popular in a manner. Mm -hmm. it, 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 he, he does not make it exclusive. Scientists always make scientific knowledge as exclusive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Maybe you can come here. No, 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 it's okay. Yeah. Um, sometimes we, I feel that we might be too, too, too concerned on the intellectual level or so scholarly level, but we forgot that what we are doing or translating are a kind of spiritual thing. So as a translator, of course, I do agree that I have to have this kind of skills also, but. As a translator, you should be spiritually prepared when you translate these things, because once you have, once you are in that state, state, Allah will help you for that. He's going to do that for you. The influence of the spirit of Biju Saman will be with you there, because this is his work. I might be crippled because of my academic uh, uh, preparation, but. Nothing is impossible with God. So, as a translator, I should really uh, uh, examine my desire, what is my motive, and when I have that genuine feeling, and I connect with God, and God will do what for us. And that's the time when these things, the messages that, that you're going to translate, will penetrate to the reader, it's the longer your work, it's God's work. I think that was discussed by Dr. Akin, and he said about uh, divine employment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, inspiration. Inspiration. Yeah. 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 So, so, you yeah. so you should be like at the proper state of mind, yes. and at the proper disposal, mm -hmm. so that uh, you uh, attract, uh, I think, uh, the inspiration. Because I, I experience that. Because sometimes when I translate, my mind seems to uh, paralyze. So I have to wait, and then I pray. I really pray, and Lord, help me. What, what's going on? And in many times, He enlightened me for that. So I do not, I do not just bank on my my skills. I need to bank my skills dependent on his. And I think that it should be, I would suggest that the translator should look for that. Thank you. You say the translator should be spiritually ready for this. Uh, maybe we have it. Francis, I want to learn uh, what are you doing to be ready for translation shortly? I do not get what you mean. What are you uh, doing to be ready Spiritual. Uh, for translation? Ah. It's a very relative thing. No? <laughs> um, I made sure that I have a very good relationship with my fellow me being and to God. If I hurt someone, then as much as possible I go to that someone and say, I'm sorry, before I do translation, something like that. So I, I tried to first uh, connect, have a very good relationship with white being, and, and then to my God. That's the way my, I, I do for my spiritual preparedness. Yes. Uh, and burden those things, you know. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Uh, maybe we should start. Yeah. At least we can read uh, one or two paragraphs from. Uh... Okay. Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is from 31st window. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم وفي الأرض آيات للموقنين وفي أنفسكم أفلا تبصرون 
We have created man in the best of forms, and in the earth there are signs for those who are certain, and in your own selves will you not then not see. Uh, 95.4 and uh, Quran, chapter 51, verse 20 and 1. This window is the window of man, and it is concerned with man's self. This window is the window of man, and it's concerned with man's self. For more elaborate discussions of it in this respect, we refer you to the detailed books on the thousands of learned and scholarly saints, and here only point out a few principles we have received from the effulgence of the Quran. It is like this. As is explained in the 11th word, man is a missive so comprehensive that through his self, Almighty Allah makes perceived to him all his names. For the details, we refer you to the other words and here only explain three points. So we'll just read the first point maybe. First point. Bunu okuyam değil mi sen? Yes. So that's why we will just read the first point. Man is a mirror to the divine names in three aspects. The first aspect, like the darkness of the night, shows up light, so through his weakness and impotence, his poverty and need, his defects and faults, man makes known the power, strength, riches and mercy of an all-powerful one of glory, and so on. He acts as a mirror to numerous divine attributes in this way. <coughs> the first aspect, like the darkness of the night, shows up light, so through his weakness and impotence, his poverty and need, his defects and faults, man makes known the power, strength, riches and mercy of an all-powerful one of glory, and so on. He acts as a mirror to numerous divine attributes in this way. I think uh, let's say during the day <coughs> uh, there is the sun from outside lots of light so these lamps we may not even uh, notice and but uh, if let's say there is uh, no sun complete darkness there's these lamps will be very uh, visible uh, so the opposites I think uh, are really mirrors and uh, if uh, now Allah is uh, powerful he is uh, capable uh, but uh, opposites uh, attract if let's say you also feel you know powerful then uh, I think the power of Allah will not reflect on you. If let's say you feel your uh, weakness and your uh, limitedness uh, and uh, your lack of uh, capacity, uh, then uh, Allah's uh, power will reflect on you and you will uh, feel it. So the more uh, uh, you uh, uh, what vanish, the more you exist because you reflect the true existence but you more the more you think you exist then you repel the real existence and uh, in a sense you really throw yourself into non-existence uh, so the best way to uh, uh, reflect uh, Allah's uh, attributes is to realize that uh, you don't uh, possess them, you don't uh, own them, uh, and you really uh, want them, you desire them. Uh, 
Then Allah will reflect on you. Uh, let's say the sun will not shine on a lamp because the lamp has you know some light, but it will shine on a surface which has uh, no light. It will be very uh, uh, clear there. So I think this is a uh, matter of uh, uh, ego uh, also uh, here. It is just to uh, know yourself. So we are blank. Now what makes uh, I think uh, Prophet Muhammad and all prophets really unique? They don't bring anything from themselves. Let's say Prophet Muhammad didn't know how to write or read. Uh, no uh, schooling, no nothing. Uh, so uh, it is clear that whatever he says, it is not from him. It is directly from Allah. And the only major virtue he had is trust. He never lied. He never lied. He never deceived anyone. Uh, so again, it, it, it gives people assurance that whatever he says, he is telling the truth. He reflects the truth. But uh, if, let's say, uh, the opposite is true, uh, then people, you know, may get suspicious. If, let's say, an alim says, okay, I receive revelation from God, well, is it really revelation or is it his own knowledge? You know, you wouldn't be so sure. Uh, and uh, is it really trustworthy? If it is not trustworthy, again, you would be so sure. So the prophet is like, like you know, blank, really. Nothing from himself, so that anything he says, anything he does is directly from Allah. Well, I have a dilemma and I want to ask a question. The degree of reflection on us is changed or uh, the degree of awareness of us change? Yeah, both. Uh, everyone, you know, has a, a stomach or a certain diameter. For example, compassion. <coughs> uh, women obviously have bigger stomach for compassion. So Allah's, uh, uh, the name uh, Rahim, the most compassionate, it will reflect a lot more strongly on mothers than on fathers. So the uh, fitrat, the creation, uh, has something uh, uh, to do with it. Uh, and then, I think the development. That is, uh, let's say a woman uh, can really value compassion and show compassion, in a sense, eat compassion, give compassion, then the, the, the stomach of compassion will grow and we get more and more. But if, let's say, doesn't do that, compassion, uh, you know, uh, why am I stupid that, you know, I will do something for others or sacrifice myself for others, then the stomach, you know, will shrink, shrink, shrink. And then uh, even if she is a mother, a mother with zero compassion, you know, uh, meaning. So I think uh, there is a potential, but there is also a lot of room for change. I think this paragraph is explained by Badiu Zaman in another, another place mm -hmm. uh, by saying the meaning of Allahu Samad. Mm -hmm. That means uh, all things depends on Allah, yeah. but there is nothing, uh, yes. uh, Allah will depend on nothing. Yeah. This is the meaning of Allah Samad, uh, Badiu yeah. Zaman explained in another place. Mm -hmm. Also, maybe we can add something to the, if we think again, meaning of the window and the meaning of the window you know the we we can see the behind the window and this window is the human beings window and how can we see the name of Allah SWT from the human beings this kind of places is quite clear enough and especially this part the the 33 windows short words particularly this 31st window is quite uh, clear. I think it is necess there is a, a strong necessity to translate this part, this kind of parts at least, word by word. I mean in meaning, for example. Uh, this part maybe need a literal uh, <laughs> translation. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think uh, also we shouldn't really be kind of uh, hung up on uh, the literal meaning doesn't making much sense. Because uh, there are you know, two kinds of 
meanings. One is the meaning that we get from the text. It is a surface meaning. And then the meaning we get uh, through the text via inspiration. That is, the words that you put in there, they uh, <coughs> form uh, some kind of uh, structure, but such that uh, it kind of it kind of acts like uh, a retriever of meanings, even though the face value is not much. I think the uh, inspiration that it invokes can be tremendous. Uh, so I think we shouldn't really uh, uh, be hung up on the words meaning perfect sense because we have the same problem in Turkish. The, in the origin, Rasal I mean, certain sentences, phrases, even paragraphs, I mean, we are native speakers, we don't understand. <laughs> uh, but we think we understand. We understand something. And then we tell what we understand. You look at the text. Does the text say that? Well, <laughs> maybe not. But you understand it. Uh, the text kind of, you know, uh, kind of some meanings filter through uh, that frame. So it is, you know. <laughs> maybe because of lack of language, I may not understand, I may not tell uh, enough or quite. Like this, for example, in here it's important to understand people, their poverty and weakness, like this during the translation, how much we understand we are not the real, me, uh, mm. real people who give this meaning in here. How much we understand we are not uh, real mm. people who uh, makes these beauties or this good translation, mm. I think it will increase the effectiveness of the mm. translation in here. Mm -hmm. Like the being mirror in here. Mm -hmm. After the understanding of this meaning, yeah, yeah. how much the translators understand we are not, these beauties of the translation are not come from me. Yeah. And we understand our weakness and poverty and show it, yeah. and the translator may be much more effective than the previous one. Or sometimes maybe the trans. I yeah. uh, forgive me for uh, telling this one. Maybe sometimes the you are saying <laughs> kind of yes. to feel really helplessness and to seek the help of God uh, in uh, making the translation in the best way possible. <coughs> but if you say, "Hey, I am great translator. Give me the text. Give me uh, two hours, and I will do it." Instead of that. Yeah, may Allah help me. <laughs> I don't know what to do. A humble translator. A humble translator, yeah, yeah, the humility. Yeah, well. But also, I want to add something yeah, that sometimes humble maybe... Hungry, <laughs> hungry Okay, sometimes maybe we will translate it uh, as much as possible to the nearer to the, to the text. Mm. Uh, it might be that we don't understand the real meaning of poverty, but someone who is going to read our translation would really understand better than we do. Mm. So that it's also the possibility, there is also possibility that there would be people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send some people who would understand better than the translator who really translated this word. Uh, to sum up, because we are already late uh, for the dinner, I, I would like just two minutes to sum up with the things that we discussed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created men for certain purposes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created men not to be translator, not to be doctor, not to be teacher, not to be this one, that one. Those are just because we are on the on earth, that's why we are busy with something. The reason why we came here is not to go down and have the dinner. We could have dinner in, in our respected countries. The real reason why we are here is just for this uh, meeting, right? It's the same things that we are sent to this world with a greater purpose and that purpose is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are ways that we might we may know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are three greatest greater teacher and in one other place Ustad Bedu Zaman add one more to this great teacher these great teachers are the universe the book of universe Rasulullah alayhi salatu wassalam and Quran Azim Shan that teaches us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the greater teachers. But in another place in Masnavi Nuriya, Ustad Badi Zaman puts another one that is men, the consciousness. Then if men look at himself, if we are able to read ourselves, inshallah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because we are one of the greatest mirror or the greatest manifestation of uh, the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. As someone who looks at himself, men arafa, uh, نفسه فقد عرف 
Rabbah, whoever knows himself, inshallah, would recognize and would uh, uh, know his creator. Uh, th there are other three aspects. So the first aspect is about opposites, that through our weaknesses we, we will understand the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second aspect is through our particles, like we have knowledge but it is partial, we have power but it's partial. With this partiality we will understand the absolute power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, absolute knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is also great knowledge. I know how to make this house, but Allah knows how to create this universe. Something like that. And the third aspect is there are more than 70 names that impresses of which are apparent in man's comprehensive beings. When Allah SWT created in ours, whenever we look at ourselves, we will see that Allah SWT is Khaliq Mutlaq, Alim Mutlaq, Hakim Mutlaq, Hakim Mutlaq, and almost 70 names uh, in uh, Qatra. Uh, Ustad Bedi Zaman explains the 70 names that is reflected in man's physical, spiritual being. Uh, but again, for all those things, even this simple part uh, in the Risale Nur, if we do not know the other parts related to life, related to men, 23rd world, uh, 30th flush, Ismahai, uh, stuff of Moses, the, 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 the definition of men. If we do not know these things in the risale Nur about the definition of man, the Ismahai and all those things, it would be very hard for us to really get, even if we could get it word by, by word translation, but we would not be able to understand really what Bedi Zaman Sayyid Nursi wants to say. Because Ustad Bedi Zaman says at the beginning, it's many times he says, we refer you to the other words. This reference is actually not just, it's, it's not just humility. So I couldn't explain this one well here, so you go also read this one, not like that. It's really, if you want to, to understand the, uh, exact uh, yeah, exact meaning, or to, to get closer to the exact meaning, we should really, re when he say refer, we really need to go to these references in order to come up with a better translation.